for all of them uh, without their family. In the 80s, when David came back to South Africa, there was a, an enormous amount of civil unrest. Oh. The country was literally on the brink of civil war. The black youth was expressing itself more vehemently and more clearly than it had previously. David talked about the kind of craziness that was happening in South Africa. He found it quite difficult to cope with and very different from what he'd been used to. He was completely colorblind. He's looking at people as people rather than black people and white people. David's family lived in the northern suburbs of Johannesburg. There was anything other than white families living in those suburbs. La, 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 the white suburbs in South Africa were kept very isolated from the chaos that was happening in the black townships. Dave was aware of the huge gap between the haves, which were the whites, and the have-nots, which were anything other than white. And he was determined not to fall a uh, victim of that prejudice. The first school that David went to when he came back to South Africa was a school called St. Stithians College. It was not a liberal education like the one that he'd enjoyed in the United States. Very stuffy, all boys. It was very focused on academics and, and sport. It was a fairly elite school based on an English public school system. You had to wear these khaki shorts with a khaki shirt tucked into them with your socks pulled up to your knees. You looked like a bloody idiot. It was a real classical private school and, you know, you couldn't put a foot wrong because they used to beat you if you did. Dave wasn't the, the, the cooperative conforming boy. What set him on fire was his music and, and art. St. Stithians didn't favor the arts very much. His headmaster at St. Stithians told him that, uh, that he'd better put himself together. He was certainly not going to earn a living in music. Val decided that he would be better served in a different environment. When David was about 16, he left St. Stithians College. He wanted to find more of an outlet for his art. He was accepted at the Johannesburg School of Art, Ballet and Music, which was he was thrilled about. David's artistic abilities were drawing and painting. David did do a, an amazing shot of the Beatles. It is one of the nicest sketches I've ever seen. Art schools are very rigid structures. I don't know whether it's the environment that David was particularly looking for. He didn't like to be told what to draw and how to draw it. He came up with his own drawings and didn't like to conform to the whole this is how it's done. So he transferred and went to Damlin College in the center of Johannesburg. That was purely academic. It was just get him in, teach him quick and get him out. The environment that he was used to out of school was quite a liberal environment. Graham and David and I were typical teenagers. We did spend a lot of time in, in shopping malls at each other's houses and video arcades. Bring the law, bring the law. We'd cause as much trouble as we possibly could without really getting into trouble. And then at night we used to do a lot of clubs. Gay clubs were the cool clubs to go to. There were gay nights and then there were straight nights, so we used to go on the straight nights. Um, there was a lot of high energy which David couldn't bear. He hated it, but he liked that. He liked getting out and scoping the chicks. I can remember spending days with David and Graham listening to music. David listened to Cass Stevens an enormous amount. I remember him playing guitar to father and son. He was very, very talented on guitar and he was absolutely passionate about it. We just couldn't believe what he was doing. We're like, how the hell did you, did you make a, a guitar change like that? Where did you get that chord from? He was a natural performer. David left South Africa as soon as he finished high school. He wanted to do something different. He wanted to just go and explore the world and do whatever he had to do. We decided to travel around Europe, like uh, you know, stay in hostels and cheap places. If he knew how to do one thing, he could play music. So we try to see if we can make some money on the streets of Amsterdam. I remember David playing the song that Jane likes on the streets of Amsterdam in January, and it being absolutely freezing. Would you like to play? Every 
everybody was walking by and nobody giving us any money at all. And I'll be back around again. We ran out of cash. So David left Amsterdam just before Jonathan and I left. We all thought that David was a little bit lost and those that were close to him were concerned about what the hell he was going to do with the rest of his life. He had spent two years bumming around, discovering himself. You know, enough was enough. Next, Dave lands in Virginia and takes the stage. You found this in that car? There's no way! <laughs> but has trouble finding his true voice. He was writing songs, but no one really knew about it. He told me he was scared to show them to anybody. Log on to VH1.com to see rare photos and footage of Dave Matthews. And check out early photos and footage of all Driven artists. We were traveling around Europe and David ran out of money. He just didn't really know what he wanted to do. His family had moved to Charlottesville and that seemed like the obvious place to go. Dave came to Charlottesville in 1989. Charlottesville is the kind of place that could hold the interest of somebody with some creative energy. Oh, and I step into the light. There's an incredible wealth of talent here, whether it's novelists or researchers or musicians. A lot of diversity, a lot of uh, appreciation of diversity. The first time I saw him, I remember he had on African clothes, these orange and yellow sort of puff pants and shirts. It was his look, man. He loved it. Crazy colors with other crazy colors, all kinds of little necklaces. It was just this incredible carnivalesque character. I remember just wondering, who the hell is that? He was the bartender at Miller's, which is a famous place for musicians and artists of all kinds to hang out. They had jazz shows there almost every night of the week. Very dark, very smoky. It was an incredible social scene. Everyone's walking in, shooting the crap, talking, you know, drinking beers, hanging out, and he fit right into the middle of that. He was the bartender, and he brought a good vibe when he was there. You just couldn't wait to get to that bar, you know, and sit there and rap to Dave. Dave is a storyteller. It's an awesome skill. Dave was a little bit like Dylan Thomas, the poet who was famous for just having this endless flow of repartee and wordplay and, and uh, eloquence. And that was Dave. There were so many late nights hanging out after hours at Miller's. All the employees from one place or other would gather and drink till dawn. Very slacker, slacker-like. It was a lot of 20, 30-somethings that really still wanted to do something in the arts. The music scene in the arts have always been really powerful in this town. There was something happening just about every place. You had offstage 